Hello there ladies and gentlemen, Sigval here and welcome back to another video. In this one we're going to talk about lethal attack chance and lethal attack damage, let's just call it lethal for now, and we're going to talk about what that exactly is, how can you get it and what characters it can be used on, because I feel like lethal attack chance and lethal attack damage is something that's uh, really poorly understood by the newer players and they just don't know what's up with that, and that can lead to some damage loss on the Batman Ninja team specifically. So yeah, well, that being said, let's get into it. So Lethal Attack Chance, first of all, because this is the simplest thing to discuss, is going to be a modifier that you can add on the gears of the characters, on the talents of the characters, and that will allow you to deal lethal hits. It's basically a chance-based effect that works kind of the same way as Fast Attack Chance works or Crit Chance works. You have a specific chance to trigger that effect, and when you trigger it, you're going to get the benefits out of it. Now, Lethal Attack Chance, unlike Crit Chance and Fast Attack Chance, is going to cap at 60%. Some characters can reach a higher amount, I mean only one character, but we'll get into that later, but mainly it's going to be a 60% chance. Now what happens when you hit a lethal? You're going to do a lethal attack hit that's going to bypass the opponent's block, which is one of the most useless things in the game. If you're going to hit an opponent that is blocking, you're doing something wrong already, but at the same time will slightly increase your damage just by 10%. But that's, that's not all, it can be increased. Now what is lethal attack damage? Lethal attack damage is basically the same thing as crit damage, the only difference being that you obviously can't put it uh, on gears and on most talents, we'll get into that later. And it's going to function in basically the same way, it's going to start a certain amount, unlike crit damage it starts at uh, 110%, which means a 10% damage increase when you're going to hit a lethal attack hit by default, and this can be increased by some certain characters. Now there is most likely a cap in the game for lethal attack damage but that cap is most likely far higher than the cap for crit damage so it can go above and beyond without having anything to help it out like we have with crit um, uh, damage with dark metal cards to help it out all the way to 500% lethal attack damage goes far beyond that certain cap. There are going to be a few characters in the game that can uh, not necessarily have access themselves, though it applies to themselves as well, but mainly used to buff our characters' lethal attack damage. One of them is going to be Batman Ninja Robin, and he has a passive that every single time your Batman Ninja characters are going to hit a little hit, uh, it's going to stack lethal attack damage for that character specifically. Those buff, uh, buffs have a certain duration, and they're going to expire, but at the same time stack upon each other, to the point if you're hitting constantly, you can reach the maximum amount of lethal attack damage you can possibly have on, for example, Batman Ninja Catwoman, because that's what we mostly use. So for the Batman Ninja team, for this purpose, lethal attack damage is just something that it's there, you don't really have to worry about too much, just keep in mind that you should put lethal attack chance on Batman Ninja Catwoman, because her third special does not add a flat amount of lethal attack chance, but increases the lethal attack chance that you already have by a percentage. So definitely add lethal attack chance to your Batman Ninja team and you'll get lethal attack damage from uh, Batman Ninja Robin and it will function basically like a second crit. Now Brainiac is going to be yet another character that buffs our characters with uh, lethal attack damage, that's going to happen with his special 1. In theory only buffs himself with the special 1 up to 10 times, giving him additional 400% lethal attack damage, but at the same time this passive, excuse me, this passive allows him to transfer 170% of his lethal attack chance and lethal attack damage to other legendary characters. So basically you put lethal attack chance on Brainiac, if you don't have lethal attack chance on Brainiac that might be the reason why your Brainiac team is not doing damage, you stack the lethal attack damage with the special one and your other legendary characters in the team basically get transferred those stats. So yet again it functions like a second crit for them basically and it's going to trigger far more often than a basic crit because he transfers a higher amount than the cap and usually when it's transferred through this way it's going to be able to exceed the 60% cap for the characters that he transfers it to. Now as far as lethal attack damage goes on other characters except for the Batman Ninja team and the teams buffed up by Brainiac, there is still a way to get lethal attack damage on any characters that you might have, but it's not the most efficient or the more most accessible way for all the people. So the first thing that we got ever introduced into the game in terms of adding lethal attack damage to any character was through artifact bonuses. Now artifact bonuses have been introduced a very very long time ago, though I still get the feeling, and this reflects on myself as well, they are a very 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 small part of the game because the artifact reforges are locked only into a chest 
uh, of course, unless you, you want to buy them from these special offers, are locked into a chest that's for the most part the last thing you want to buy. It's something that you it might be necessary at some point, but you want to focus on other things. So most of the player base will not have access to those resources, but you can get lethal attack damage on artifacts. And that is one way to get it. Not only to get lethal attack damage, and I know this is not lethal attack damage, I've literally never gotten it, but I've seen people getting it, is going to show up as a legendary uh, talent once you get the character to 7 stars. It's not going to show up uh, on the lower rarities, it's not going to show up as uh, rare, epic, uh, it's going to only show up as legendary talent and is going to be additional 40% lethal attack damage. So that is yet another way you can get yourself some lethal attack damage. Now let's talk about adding lethal attack chance and lethal attack damage to your characters, if it is worth it and what characters you should do it on. Just want to mention again, make sure you add lethal attack chance to your Batman Ninja team and to your Brainiac team, even though they get... It's very misleading because this is plus percentage. When it says plus percentage, not flat percentage, it increases the chance that you already have. So you need to have lethal attack uh, chance here in order to be able to have any lethal attack chance on uh, Batman Ninja Catwoman. And same goes for Brainiac. Add lethal attack chance to Brainiac because you'll not give those flat amounts to the legendary characters in your team, but will give a percentage of his own stats. So make sure those two always have lethal attack chance. And I wouldn't worry too much about lethal attack damage uh, on them for now. Like the Batman Ninja team seems to be doing fine with the base lethal attack uh, damage that they have, but I guess won't be too bad to get uh, a legendary lethal attack damage on Catwoman. Another team that functions very well with lethal attack damage and I have uh, experienced this through the artifact bonuses and haven't gotten any luck with the uh, legendary talent but you can do so with the legendary talent even though you don't have it on the artifacts. If you get yourself a legendary lethal attack damage uh, talent on Harbor Harley Quinn for example then it's worth adding lethal attack chance there because of their double damage stacking because it will first benefit their basic attack hit and then will benefit separately the dot value that's already increased by the benefited basic attack hit so Batman uh, so the Harbor Harley Quinn is definitely a choice and I guess Slats of Joker falls in the same category as this. Another mention worth making is that the legendary characters that you're going to use with Brainiac do not need lethal attack chance themselves because they are going to get from Brainiac all the lethal attack chance they need. Now are there any other characters in the game that will benefit from lethal attack damage? Yes, all of them. But unlike the mentions, also I want to mention Kim Flan Sakomen, if you do have the beta club, you can run lethal attack chance with uh, just a little bit of lethal attack damage, it will most likely be worth it. So in theory, you would ideally have lethal attack chance and lethal attack damage on every single character in the game, because if you can get the lethal attack damage on artifacts, then it's definitely a stat worth having over the additional attack that you're missing out by putting lethal attack chance in there. But the problem with that is... That's a very unsustainable thing to do, because as I previously mentioned, the artifact reforges are such a rare, tedious and expensive resource to get, and in order to be able to run lethal builds on every single damage tier that you're using, you'd have to, for each soul rate, have an artifact that's going to be used for damage dealing in that play specifically, equipped with lethal attack damage rolls. So in theory, lethal attack chance and lethal attack damage are something that would in theory benefit everybody, but so far it is kind of gated to some specific characters. So on the Batman team and Brainiac, just make sure you have lethal attack chance and don't worry about the lethal attack damages by default and maybe try adding some lethal attack damage through the legendary talent for the Abrika Harley Quinn and less of Joker. But y'all are being said, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye! This is the future.